I'm sure. I think it was a very tumultuous ride. My family has been on both sides of the spectrum. Um, being that Prince was, you know, been up for murder for Jason Lightborn and then being on the side of the spectrum of him being the victim. I think that very few people offered us an iota, at least, of contritional empathy. They felt that we should have suffered and they felt that he deserved what he got. And I'm completely against that. I have, I think, a right to be angry, but I'm choosing not to be. Mm. Um, and I think that today was more so not about myself. It was about implementing the vehicle of empathy and that was for Jaquai Perman and his family. Um, I think loss depends on how you define it. I think that when someone's behind bars and they can't touch the family and they can't build those memories, um, that certainly is defined in my opinion as a loss. And so today was about um, just being being really embedded in that vehicle of change. Um, and you know, I love my brother, but that doesn't mean that I'm gonna walk around angry. No, um, 45 years that the young man was just sentenced yes. to. Did that bring any peace for you there? Absolutely not. Um, I think that a lot of people are so adamant on, on what they would do in these situations. Oh, I would feel this way, I would feel that way, and they should have been this. I honestly feel that no one knows until they're in this situation, and how could that bring peace? If I pride myself on being a, a very bright um, and vibrant person, but that could never bring me peace because someone is living in an unfavorable situation. Um, again, I feel empathy for him, and I really wish he could have made a better choice. Um, and I wish my brother could have made better choices as well, but that would never bring me peace. I could never celebrate and do all the things that people did to our family. Drinking shivers and drinking shots and putting up sheets and omitting his name from things. And, you know, people took pictures of his corpse lying there. I could never bring myself to do something so detestable. It, it, to me, it just makes me sad. And, and for me, I think it's, it's about really embracing that change and it has to start today. Now that brings up a very valid point about social media and yeah. in this day and time there yeah. seems to be no boundaries. Yes. What do you say to those people, and not just in your brother's case, but mm -hmm. just period, who just don't seem to be sensitive to the fact that there are families involved? <laughs> I think that um, I'm a strong believer in karma. And I think that certainly if, I think that certainly is going to be, uh, life is going to be a lot of people's teachers. Um, I think that if you try to avoid situations, life certainly is going to be in the forefront. Um, so social media, I actually choose not to have social media. I'm probably the only human being that doesn't have Facebook, um, and that's for a reason, and that's for my privacy and my peace of mind. Um, and I just wish that people didn't give it away for free. Um, I think that it was, like I said, it was truly detestful, and it was just, it was sick, and it made me feel sick that people would do that. As the only family member to have seen my brother lying there, I think I said that in my victim statement, um, in that sheet. Um, as he was actually murdered, you know, uh, uh, actually near where I was staying at the time, um, near there, um, it was for people to have been so senseless as to take a picture of that, I just, I don't even know what we're made of. I don't know what the fabric of, of humanity is made of, and it, it has to change. We have to be woven with, with some empathy. We really do. It's, it's, it's sad.